that's what sustainability is about, that challenge about what, what's the better kind of society that we can have um, that, that, that is both creates great communities and protects the environment. Because my thinking has always been around actually what are the connections between things rather than seeing things in, that, in those silos and, and sustainability is very much about crossing the boundaries of, of different areas and trying to say well what's the best parts of engineering, what's the best parts of, of community development and how do we bring all of these environmental science, how do we bring all, the things, all, these, all of these things together to make a better society and it's not about one or the other because I guess the old way of thinking is about thinking that solutions can be in one category or the other and actually they can't, we need to actually think across those categories. My key role in Cambodia was around, was, was around the Tonlesap Lake, which is this amazing freshwater lake in the middle of Cambodia, um, which expands ten times in size through this river that runs in two directions. So the Mekong floods and pushes the Tonlesap River upstream and just floods this huge lake. And then in the dry season, the lake slowly drains out. It's extraordinary. So we're working with fishing communities around that lake. Again, very poor communities, um, trying to uh, get a living from a very productive freshwater fishery. The Tonless is one of the most productive freshwater fisheries in the world. Really good work. One of the key lessons for me around that by realising that you can't just simply focus at the local level, which is actually about a global sustainability project, was their very livelihood was being threatened, not only by overfishing and, and those kinds of things which we're working with them on, but by plans for the Mekong River which had 60 dams planned from in, not in Cambodia, but in Laos and Thailand and especially in China, where all of a sudden that flooding, that lake, everything that made it so productive was about to be undermined. These people's own livelihood of these two million people that live around the lake was going to be undermined by something that was entirely out of their control which they almost had no knowledge of. And there's no point trying to simply save small communities and work at that local level anymore when at the, at the high institutional levels where of policy and practice is undermining that local development. And that's why sustainability is so important because it makes those connections not just between the economy, the community and the environment but also between the local and the global. So now I still work in Cambodia every year. So I go there for about a month a year and I'm working with an organisation called Flora and Fauna International. Now that's really interesting, and I guess what this is part of this ongoing change. These were traditionally very much around saving species. That's what they used to do. Now, they very much are about community development. And that's a really big shift for them because they realise that they can't save species unless they do sustainable development. Because it's, uh, unless they work with communities and make them partners in protecting ecosystems, there's no way you're going to save species in the long run. So we've had this really interesting shift. All these groups have realised that sustainability, those interconnections, is actually where the long-term solutions are going to be. When I was working in uh, amongst different communities in Laos and Cambodia and other places, I was like, I really like this work, but this is their community, this is not my community. <laughs> and sometimes and I'm realising I, I need to actually make sure I have a community too. <laughs> I don't want to spend the whole of, whole of my life working to make other communities better when actually I know that my own community actually he needs a lot of work as well. So, so and, and I guess coming back to council, um, the current councillor was retiring and I was friends with her and uh, um, she suggested that um, they actually run for council. And, um, it was, and it was a really opportune time and, to, and a great way for me to really connect with my community and, and make it a more, more sustainable community. One of the things I've really enjoyed is saying, how do you take these great visions, these great ideas, how do you get them into practice? One of the exciting things about being a mayor in a place like Fremantle is that, well, Fremantle people are interested in sustainability. I mean, they elected the first um, Green Lower House member in the state. We've, there's a real passion, I think, here to, to actually make ourselves a more sustainable society. So that's really exciting. And also we've got the perfect bones, or the perfect built form, I should say, for a sustainable society. We, um, we're, we were a walking city, we were a sustainable city. But historically that's what we are. We've had that taken over in many ways by the automobile in the last 50 years. 
So now it's about actually getting back to that and actually saying, how can we be a sustainable walking-based centre that has a community feeling about it? So it's not just about reducing energy, it's about bringing back community. How do you get making sure that artists can, can keep living here, that young people can afford to live here, that older people can afford to live here? How, how do we actually make sure that we actually stay a really great, uh, diverse community um, and one that actually cares about its environment and cares about its people? I think solar panels are beautiful and they're, they're, they actually um, they, don't, they don't detract from that heritage building. The fact that they sit together showing that we love our past and we care for our future is exactly how it should look. Um, and I was, yeah, I was very pleased that Fremantle Council agreed to allow those to remain, so that was, which was part of the debate. In fact, my vision of Fremantle is that we would we keep all of our heritage buildings and that fantastic feel we've got, but we also create fantastic contemporary buildings that have that are cutting edge in sustainability that actually show this is the this is going to be the heritage of the future because we were the first city to actually drive going forward um, this new built form that, that showed you how you live in a carbon constrained world which is what we do live in and we don't take that seriously enough we have to fundamentally rethink how we design our cities over the, over the next 50 years because if we don't we keep doing it the way we've done it, the world we live in in 50 years' time is not going to be a pleasant one. For me, Fremantle is really important in that big, in that big picture. And the reason is, if, if a place like Fremantle can't show the way forward as a sustainable community, where can we do it? We're wealthy, we live in a great place, we've got the great built form foundation. If we can't be a model for a sustainable city, then then, then, then who, who can? One of the real challenges for Fremantle in its future, one of the reasons I want to be mayor, is that I see Fremantle um, declining as that, as that place where you can live, work and shop, all in one place. You see that a lot of the shops are empty in Fremantle now. Everyone who lives in Fremantle doesn't work in Fremantle, and everyone who works in Fremantle can't afford to live here, as a general rule. And for me, that's the opposite to a sustainable, sustainable city. So we actually, and this is where the economy comes back in, by actually strengthening the Fremantle economy, getting more jobs and a greater diversity of those jobs back into Fremantle, getting a diversity of retail, so that people can, don't need to get in their car and every time they want to buy something, go all the way to Boragoon, which is not sustainable. And at Boragoon, you never see anybody you know. Um, we want actually people to shop in Fremantle where they see their neighbours, where they get to know people. And that's about that link again between a vibrant economy, which requires more people, back to the density argument, linking up with a, with a sustainable community. And I guess Fremantle does get stuck in that, as though we shouldn't work collaboratively across uncomfortable boundaries. And for me, that's what sustainability is about. And that, that black and white thinking, that oppositional politics, for me is the old politics, that actually isn't getting us the results we need. And I think uh, going into the future, the results we need is actually going to be a collaborative approach across traditional boundaries that actually is engages with everybody, doesn't see them as either the enemy or as part of the in club, but actually saying, hey, we're all part of this community together and we all need each other. What do we have in common? How can we find win-win solutions? And that's what sustainability is about. It's actually saying, where are the win-win solutions here in which we all benefit and we get a sustainable community and an economy that underpins that. That's what we need. We have to show the rest of the world that it's possible. And by doing that, and, that, and it's those, those stories that inspire, that show, hey, this is how it's done, and this is how you make a livable place, a place that um, doesn't rely on the automobile, a place that, we, that, that, that doesn't have carbon emissions, a place that has great new green architecture, a place that still is a community and still is affordable for lots of people. By doing that and showing, and the rest of the world will see that and actually start to see, okay, we, we've got to move forward.